Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about one of the exciting new features coming in Blender 2.92. Now, Blender 2.92 is currently in alpha. That means it's very early. Do not use it in production. We're still going to go through the beta cycle before we finally get to the release. So we're probably looking at three or four months out until any of this is in your hands, unless you're willing to, you know, walk amongst the dragons. There be dragons there. But this is one of the biggest things that has happened to Blender, and there's been a lot of big things that happened to Blender recently. In 2.5 on, we've got B Mesh, we had Cycles, uh, we had the Grease Pencil and all the two new 2D drawing and animation stuff added. We've got EV real time rendering, we've got sculpting, and now we have a movement called Everything as Nodes. And what we're looking at today, this right here is the beginning of that, or I guess the continuation of that, because technically the shade stuff right now is using nodes, but this is using nodes to create procedural geometry. These are called geometry nodes. And what you can see in this particular example, which you can download, I will make the link available. This is probably the ideal place to start. You have a bunch of rocks used as raw input. They're available on here somewhere, but there we go. So we got a bunch of source rocks available, and then we have a singular mesh. This, um, let me turn this pebbles off right here. This guy right here. And what we are using is a geometry node, this thing down here, to populate all of these pebbles, or at least four of these pebbles, across the surface here in a variety of different formats. And this is done via a geometry node. So let's turn that one back on. There is your end result. And here is the new graph. This is available in a new window. So you see here, you now have a geometry node editor. And let's take a look at how this one worked. So this starts off, this is the input. This is the geometry itself. We got a set of uh, three sets of pebbles coming in. You see over here, uh, there are the large, the medium and small. We multiply them across, and then we've got an input object. That input object, if we expand this one out, you'll see down here, it is the new ground. That is the surface that these are all being drawn on. And what we're doing is basically doing a point distribution across that surface of all of these various different pieces. So you got three sets of point distributions after you basically take these guys and make a hundred of them. So a hundred times multiply over for all of these things. Each one of those is then distributed across the surface. And for each one, they are randomly being scaled and rotated by the, the range of values you can see here. So obviously that's why uh, this is small. It's the smallest scale, medium. And here we got the large. So we send all these random rocks. These source rocks here are being randomly scattered across the surface. And then once they are reassembled, we're basically merging all that geometry back together. So these two sets are joined, and then the results of that are joined here, and that is your output. That output being this, this guy right here. So that is ultimately what you are creating using this uh, new set of geometry nodes. Where you could all ideally use something like this is for um, populating a city off of, you could have a bunch of source um, sources uh buildings that you draw in maybe even some roads have them all go together and build something procedurally like that you could also use it for a forest uh for creating a tree out of a variety of uh branches and nodes and so on speaking of that specifically there is actually another demo that is showcasing exactly that so this is to populate two trees uh using uh geometry nodes unfortunately this one is a new scene that has not yet implemented incomplete at the time right now and this is for future development purposes. So this is not a good learning example right now. This is the place to start. And it is still a little bit buggy. This is an alpha release, but geometry nodes are definitely going to be a big part of the future. Procedural geometry generation is a big thing. This is kind of the bread and butter of Houdini. But when you're getting into these giant worlds or scenes or something, a lot of times you're not gonna wanna place things by hand. So what you're gonna have to do is have the computer do the work for you. And that's where procedural generation can really, really shine. So let's take a quick look at how this could work. Let me just overwrite this example because, hey, it's got no real use. I'll also show you where you can download those two particular files. So this is, again, one of the simplest examples you're ever going to see. So here we've got a cube. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another mesh into the world. And this is a sphere. And they overlap like so. So now what I'm going to do is take this guy right here, my original cube. I'm going to go to modifiers. And you're going to notice there is a new modifier, geometry nodes. And what we've done is we've created a geometry node for that. Let's just take our uh, timeline window here and repurpose it as a geometry node editor. And there is our output. So basically input is this cube. Our output, well, it's this cube. I haven't really done much here. So let's throw another input in here. So we're gonna go add input and we can say uh, object info. All right, there we go. Let's pick the object 
and it'll be our sphere. So we got that input being fed in here now. So now we can work with this, this particular sphere. We can have multiple inputs, as many inputs as we actually want at this point in time. And now let's go take a look at some of the other nodes. There's a number here we can play with attributes, colors, geometry, uh, mesh. We saw the point distribution earlier on. There's some utilities, math stuff here, grouping stuff, and so on. The one we're going to use at this point in time for my simple demonstration is a Boolean. Let's drop a Boolean in and let's drop our input node of our sphere into it. So what we just did is a Boolean of type intersect. Not what I want. What I instead want is a union. So now we've basically done a combined Boolean. Let's, we could hide that other mesh. And there now is the result of this output. Our cube now, because of the geometry nodes we just put through, is now a cube sphere. Uh, and we could keep doing stuff here. So we could go ahead, drop in another node here. For example, let's go to mesh. We could do a uh, subdivision surface, drop that in there. And there you see the results. We can immediately uh, turn that out, say, to three times. And I accidentally made something phallic again. Just seems to be my curse on this channel. But as you can see, this is how um, you can use these geometry nodes to make procedural graphics out of nodes of, uh, you know, behaviors. That we got it going on here. We got, we got control over the various different inputs over here. We could have multiple inputs for our original objects. You see different values and so on that we can pass in. Um, we do have all of these nodes to work with as we go through. I imagine with time, these are going to get uh, more and more comprehensive and powerful. Uh, I don't know. I don't see anything in here for like doing looping or that kind of stuff. That would be kind of an interesting thing as well. But maybe I'm just missing a, a way of doing that. But you can just kind of keep layering these things in. So, for example, if we all don't want to come in here and triangulate our result, just a matter of dropping it in. Like so, let's drop our thing through, pin it out like so. And now we have triangulated that. We've got... Uh, we can kind of keep adding more and more of them in. And if we wanted to, we could once again add another object into the world like so. Another cube. Let's move that guy a little bit out of the way. Go back to our original cube. So we got our node back. And once again, we can drop another input here. So like so, drop that in. Let's pick our cube like so. And we could take that result that comes out of there. And we could do another Boolean. So add... Geometry, Boolean, or a join. We could join things together. Let's do a Boolean again. And we just drop this guy in here to node A, drop this guy into node B, drop that into the output. And now, oh, I didn't do intersect. Let's do a union again. So now our object is that guy. So if we move this guy around, it is that compound object. So this is a really, really simple look at how geometry nodes work. But if you, again, envision um, you create a model for uh, seven or eight different kind of buildings, you make a model for a road, etc., And you could use geometry nodes to put all that together to create a city for you. Or you could use it, uh, you could create a bunch of branches that will populate on a tree across the thing. Or again, as we saw, you could use it to populate rocks or trees in a forest or whatever using, basically you could just take this, modify it instead of rocks, have it be trees, and you've got a forest generator immediately available to you. So that's where geometry nodes really kind of shine. You'll also be able to use these to do quick edits to things like you saw here we just use it for doing simple booleans so you could create a geometry node and theoretically i guess you could share it and reuse it between various different things it'll be interesting to see where this node based based approach goes now keep in mind this is very similar in the way that we already work now with materials so any particular time that you've got a material you can now use use nodes there and just like we've got the geometry node thing we have the shader editor same basic concept where you create your shader using a network of nodes. But in this case, what you're doing is creating geometry. And this is the heart of everything as a node that Blender is ultimately moving towards as a future. Now, you probably won't have to jump down to this layer if you don't want to do procedural generation or anything like that. But there is so much potential in this approach going forward. So now if you want to learn more about it, uh, there is some temporary document or tentative documentation out there right now. So you can see what all those various different nodes are available, the documentation on the node options that are out there. So you want to figure out what these things are for. They are all documented. So everything that we looked at here, all of these node options, they are documented. So if you want to figure out what combine XYZ does, you can come in here and find uh, combine XYZ. There is some documentation available. It's, it's pretty sparse in terms of uh, what it's documented, but then again, this one is pretty straightforward in what it does. Uh, so that is available there. There's also a bit of an article talking about what is uh, happening for Blender 2.92 and the point behind it. 
uh, and the future direction of that other project, which currently unfortunately doesn't work. And there's a bit of a discussion about this whole process right here. If you're interested in grabbing the, again, where I would recommend starting is the Pebble one. Uh, it is available. I will link this in the linked article. So if you want to get your hands on this and check things out yourself, this is a good place to start. Just download this one. You can see how they got everything working. Again, if you do open it up, the place where you're going to want to look is that it's on, the modifier is on the, the pebbles here are ultimately being generated. So that that is the end result. So that um, is one of the good places to take a look. The other one here, hopefully it gets added more there in time. Uh, so the flower scattering example isn't really that useful as of right now, but I will link that as well. And then of course you do need to use Blender Alpha. So Blender 2.92, if it's in beta or production by the time you watch this video, of course, use the most current version. But as of recording, as of right now, uh, this is a nightly build I'm using. Uh, I will link this as well. So you can download Blender nightly builds here all the time. Um, and yeah, that is something else you need to check this one out. Uh, again, this is not something you should even think about using in production, uh, but it is one of those things that could be a bit of a game changer for how we use Blender going in the future. And especially for game developers, we have to do things like create forests and cities and roads and, and levels and stuff all the time where a lot of it is just you know grunt work. And geometry nodes could really help that. And then there's also some downsides that you basically could be creating a really large mesh here and hopefully you have a good occlusion and call, calling on your engine, but uh, that's a different topic for a different day. So that is the new geometry node features currently in Blender 2.92 Alpha. The everything as a nodes movement could be huge for Blender. This could be a sea change like those things I mentioned earlier, things like cycles and EV and sculpting and B mesh and so on. This could be the next big thing and it is supposed to drop in Blender 2.92 which is currently in development and hopefully coming soon. So let me know what you think of this. I'm also going to, as Blender 2.92 gets a little bit closer to release, maybe once the first alpha drops, or sorry, the first beta drops, I'll do uh, things to get excited about video, top five or so new features in it. And geometry nodes, well, they're still going to be near the top of that because this is a really cool feature. But let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.